Good morning from Hopalong Hollow. On our morning coffee walk, we've had a nice rainy morning, so it's kind of quiet and subdued out here today. You can barely hear the birds, but I always love a nice fresh rain, especially after having planted a lot of new things in the gardens or sowing seed. It's always good to get a light rain, and that's what we had this morning. Sometimes I think gardens are the prettiest right after rain. And here we still have all these spring colors going on where the irises are starting to open here and there. And there are some crazy little alliums and Spanish bluebells. And here you can get a view of the front garden, which looks like a mad jumble. But I can assure you there is a method to my madness because if you look down close, you'll see these are simply a lot of returning plants from last year. This is the Liatris. Put the bulbs in just last year, and I think I had a dozen here, and I think they're all present and accounted for. And of course, sedum is just the, one of the most wonderful things you can plant in your garden. It is so trustworthy and wonderful. Very small dames rock, short ones coming up over there. And behind that, I'm thrilled to see the bee balm because that I planted from seed last year. And that will get so tall. And here we have three wonderful roses. Graham Thomas, Tess of the D'Urbervilles, and another Graham Thomas over there in the back. Beautiful, this is going to be beautiful. These are the penstemons and they're everywhere in this garden. And these were the ones that I planted from my seed boxes um, last year. This, however, is the only lupin that came back. And then there's some yarrow and peonies. And uh, it's a, just a, once again, <laughs> one of my crazy, uh, wild and crazy cottage gardens. And as soon as everything goes up to the height that it's supposed to, this will probably be pretty marvelous. I also see several dahlias coming back. Couldn't even tell you the name of them because all the markers just faded away. It's amazing how fast a garden can grow in a week. It was just a week ago that I was in here showing you the frog pond garden. And look at how tall these Canterbury Bells have gotten in just one week. Around all the roses that we put in and checking to see if anybody has buds. And there are so many buds. And here you have it. Look at these. These are budding out. We're going to have beautiful short roses because most of them are fairly new. But they will have flowers on them. So I'm going to take a peek around and see how many roses have got buds on them. I'm thinking this is going to be the first one to bloom. This is called Granny Grimace and it's got this deep red a rose on it and I, these are just like blood red roses. This is an old red rose called Granny Grimmets. Here is a rambling rose which is magnificent and in about a week or so all these magnificent buds will just fill. This thing will be filled. The wonderful thing about the rambling roses is they have the most marvelous scent. It just fills the air. I mean, that's really what roses should be about, is their scent. Of course, they're beautiful to look at, but without the smell, I don't know. It's lacking so much when you don't have that wonderful rose scent just filling the air. And here we have our Beatrix Potter Patch looking pretty darn good. Pretty happy about that. So here the alliums are starting to get their buds. And look at the foxglove there, just as tall as can be. Planted last year from, oh, little plants that I had grown for about a year. That's the thing about foxglove. You just have to keep it going year after year after year. They're biennials, and if you want the flowers every year, always keep a tray of foxgloves growing so that you can always plant them again and again and again every year. Now, they will drop seed, but don't count on that because anything could happen to that seed. It could be devoured pretty quickly by the birds. Now if I haven't mentioned sedum before, allow me to mention sedum. 
because it makes the most wonderful hedge that you can imagine and I can't think of an easier plant to grow. It grows in hot climates, humid climates, cold climates. It's a wonderful spreader. It's actually this particular autumn joy sedum stays pretty compact and mannerly. Not all of them are mannerly. Some of them are ground covers, but this one is a beautiful grayish green foliage and the blooms on this one I believe will be these are kind of a pinkish maroon and they bloom in the late summer and the fall and these are bordering the maiden's garden which we put in last year and the roses we put in a couple weeks ago it wasn't just it just wasn't that long ago the lady gardener oh the lady gardener has some buds hoorah last autumn when i got in a big batch of roses that i had ordered i put a lot of them in pots as bare root roses and so here they are here are several of them looking so healthy and wonderful and what you do with roses is you don't want to fertilize them too much but early in spring it's good to fertilize them and I use that liquid fish fertilizer give them a nice long drink and then you just fertilize them about every two months because you don't want to overdo it this one's called a chestnut rose and this is a very old rose and the reason I purchased this one is because this gets really magnificent rose hips big ones and I also love the tininess and the fern-like quality of those little leaves. Look at the difference between the chestnut rose leaves and the earth angel leaves. So this one should be a fairly good climber, hence the trellis. Now just to show you how very, very quickly and beautifully these roses will start growing for you. By the way, this is chicken proofing. They've been digging um my little pansies out along here little monsters but ugh, it's just terrible that i have to do that but anyway this was just a bare root rose a mere few weeks ago this is tess of the dubervilles one of the beautiful literary roses from david austin and look at how healthy and beautiful it is going already i cannot wait to film this and talk about it a little bit when it starts to bloom off the courtyard in this little shade garden where I planted a lot of dahlias last year. Unfortunately, I don't know if they're coming back or not, because as I said, I was having all kinds of problems with moles. So they may not even be here, but I didn't want to take any chances. So this is a, a bed in which I put some more roses. And, and then I put those astrontia roots, which I told you about in one of the recent videos. And here it is coming up through the ground, just beautiful leaves. But I did notice on some of these little astrontias that they're trying to put out flowers already and I don't want them to do that because once they put out the flowers and go to seed they think their job is done and then they will die back. I am actually going to cut those little flowers off and I want this plant to bush out and become healthy and strong then it can put out its flowers but in the meantime I want it to uh, not just forfeit the flowers <laughs> for now and just put out that foliage and give me a nice, thick, healthy plant. Boy, April is such an odd month. It's um, 80 degrees one day, and today I think it's probably about 50. Feels pretty good out here, though. The birds are so quiet this morning. Okay, well, you know, we've traveled a few gardens this morning, and we will be traveling a few more uh, in the next video. But I think, all in all, things are looking okay. I have a lot of work to do. I have so much, so much work to do. But I'm happy to say that almost everything in here is a plant and not a weed. This, however, is a nasty weed. I don't know the name of this weed, but one thing I hate about it is that it has a really deep root, and it is hard to pull. It is hard to get it out. You've got to dig this one out all the way down to the roots. But alongside it, we will soon have these opening evening primrose, which are yellow. We've got phlox and some clematis and some old blush roses. And there's a pilgrim rose over there. And this is snow on the mountain. Some people consider this a pest. But I love the variety that it adds to your garden. And it can get it a little bit invasive, but it's easy to pull if you don't want so much of it. And then all of these are either phloxes or in this case more penstemons. 
I keep talking about the penstemons because I'm so thrilled with penstemons, so I can't wait for these to bloom so I can just show you how gorgeous they are. Of course, if you have some in your garden, you already know that. Thanks once again for coming along with me in my perfectly imperfect Hopalong Gardens. I enjoy having you here with me. I thank you so much for following. And we'll see you next week in our morning garden coffee.